Welcome back to an adventure of tangled garbage and one toy to finish a review on. I wanted to go upstream from here, but um, just a camera. This is a historical railroad. There's historical trails throughout that. People have been accessing it for decades, and some rich chungus thinks they can move in and $900 fine criminal trespassing if you walk it now. Eight miles. It's ridiculous. So I have to go down this way. I don't ain't fishing's fishing, but I want you have your heart set on a spot and you try to go there, and a game warden's like, hey, listen, or whoever manages public land that isn't public land anymore. No, hey, you know, you can't go up there because Chungus McDebag over there, he owns it now, and we'll uh, give you a $900 fine. Anyway, screw that guy. Screw Utah. Why on earth do they do stuff like that? We're going to fish here a minute and go downstream. But, uh, yeah, I got uh, this guy and some flies I made specifically for this river that we're going to try out. And then, oh, uh, uh, yeah, tangled mess. Put it in the the back of my truck and then uh oh this this increases my blood pressure just looking at first things first let's talk about this mess this is my max catch three weight seven and a half foot rod i've got an extra reel in here but i could i I'm, this is like the third one i've got third full set and fourth tip because they just can't manage to, to not break. So that, that first review I did was on just a few, like maybe 20, 30 hours of use. I've had it over a year now. Um, we're gonna see a three weight, uh, two of these rods over here, three weights. It should be able to handle this river. I've caught really big fish on a three weight, not a seven foot three weight. I'll have to see if this spine's any good for a fish that's of calculable size yep. okay we'll be back after these messages oh my gosh I caught a fish and I broke my rod are you kidding me it's broken and I have a fish on um what the heck yeah I've got a fish on and my rod is busted oh my gosh Holy cow, like what the heck? Now what? <laughs> Is it still on or did I lose it? It's still on, holy cow. Yes, fighting. Holy cow, how did that break? It just snapped, boys. That's it, that does it for this rod. It's got a one year warranty, came off. You've gotta be kidding me, look at that. Look at this. Well, that's it for that one, boys. That's uh, that is uh, goodness. That just snapped, that fish wasn't even that big either. Please tell me it didn't take my flies. One fly, two flies. Oh, well we got our flies. Holy crap, that's uh, that's tough beans right there. That's that's son of a gun. So, there you go, that's it. That's uh, your max catch rod. Oh, line sinking. Look at that, boys. We have fun now. Oh, there's so much footage and fishing that's just dead, like that. Come on, any day now. This is all the, the really the, the maximum distance you can throw this with this combo. There we go. Ha ha! Alright. Fish on. Ooh, he's pulling hard, lads. Oh my goodness, he is pulling hard. No, 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 no. We do not want that. Don't go down there, buddy. Sideways pressure. 
going to be some bend in that rod, huh? He's in the current. I don't want him in the current. Come on. I can tire him out. Get behind him. I don't want him to run downstream. That's that's bad news. He is a big, he's a decent fish too. Ooh, I like that guy. Tire him out in that current right there. I cannot land him where I'm at though. I'm not worried about him breaking the line. It's like 3x. <laughs> Try and guide him in here. What is that? Oh, that's a, a whitefish, I think. Typically, when they see you, they run hard. Is it? Oh, well, that's a decent brown right there. Look at that. On that sow bugging. That is a real good brown. Goodness, look at that fella. Then the flight came right out. That rod handled that admirably, right? Look at this brown. I'm gonna get a. I don't wanna pick it up. But here's my glove. You kind of see the size of it. That's what? 18 inches all day? The rod handled it pretty good. <laughs> Can keep from breaking them with frozen tips. That's a that's a decent sized brown trout right there. I like it. Off he goes. Winter time I don't like to pick him up. So yeah, let's get us unhooked for my here, it's just a simple sow, I think it's the sow bug. I think they're technically called crest bugs. I've kind of modified the pattern a bit, but that's it. Fish broke the wire on it. Yeah, fish gnawed that wire good. Anyway, I'm selling a bunch of these. I've got a box of them. I'll link the, am the eBay listing below, but they're all flies that I know have worked for me really well over the winter and the summer, but then uh, that was fun. That handled that really well, actually. Uh, if that fish were to pull hard and run hard, um, we would have problems, though. I was I was struggling to pull it in while it was not fighting. So if it decided it was going for a run, um, there might not have been much I could do to stop it. All right, let's see that. So. That is really all I want to do was get that one fish. Went all out for this, for that one guy, that one fish right there. I'm gonna try for another, but that's uh, this thing's fun. It doesn't cast far. It's got its problems. The price point is, I mean, it's not a $250, $300 Orvis or Reddington or or a thousand dollar Sage, but it, it's light enough backpackable if you could figure out how to get a better reel for it and a better line for it you'll be happy with it um, just understand it's got limitations it's got a weak tip it's uh most of the problems that i've had with this rod have been just this weak manufacturing but i think it's a good backup rod and if you need to save some money uh, it's a good choice Whew. All right, we back here at the shore. So, the biggest cons I see to this rod are these. Um, it doesn't handle cold weather. So if you've got ice like I've got, you gotta be super careful um, because any amount of ice in these guides, the, and you, if you take them, you bend them a little bit, they'll break right off, especially this tip section. Like what I'm doing here is a bad. So right now this is this is a broken tip. Um, I mean it's not broken, but if I were to t bend it in any sort of way, it, it would break. So what I do is I hold the whole thing and I just kind of mash the ice out between the guides. Not turn it, not twist it, not anything like that. In a tailwater like this one, the Provo River, you can uh, melt it out by sticking it underwater, and that that works too. Line is garbage, it'll sink in a couple months, so uh, get backup lines. They make good leaders and they make good hooks, so I, I use their hooks to tie some of my flies. Um, that said, it's not a max catch bobber, they don't, I don't know if they even have those. 
I do like it. It's lightweight, and very packable. And uh, okay, now the other the other thing is this these reels. So they'll tend to free spool. They'll just you'll you'll pull line out and then they'll just fly. Um, they they tend to ignore their drag settings sometimes, and uh, like that. They they don't handle. I don't know why they they do that. But um, they'll do that, and then you'll end up with, with bird's nests inside your, your reel like this, and that yeah, you can't fish that way. So those are like the four things. And then, of course, oh, those four or three. Fragile rod and <laughs> screwed up reel, the spooly bit spinning. The other thing is, is line will get between here, this cross brace and the guide, or whatever this is called, and it'll go around, and you'll end up with, with line on the top here or different problems like that. And this cross bar is also very sharp here. So it, it'll, when you pull line out, like if any normal, when on your backstroke, you pull it like that, right? Well, not now because it's all twisted up in there, nightmare-like. But uh, any normal person, it rubs on that guy all the time, constantly. It's rubbing on that guy, rubbing on that the brace, whatever you want to call this thing. That's normal, that happens. It, it's gonna push on there. So what I did is I took sandpaper and I sanded this inside until it was like polished well. And then I put a piece of, I have a hook stuck in my head. I had a, uh, I'll get to you, I'll get to you, come on. I had a, okay, focus bro. Okay, I had, I, I sanded it down and then I put this piece of tape there. Um, yeah, so just understand, this is not a cold weather setup. You fish cold weather with this, cold weather with this, and my mouth doesn't wanna work. Uh, it's gonna break, hands down. It's gonna break. Um, the that never quite seats in here. As you see, I've got this guy pushed forward. I don't think it should be that way. And this is the reel that was paired with it. I think that little guy should be down here, and this goes up like this, and that slides there like that. But I did that, and I could not push this forward enough to keep it from wobbling like that. For some reason, you run out of screw screw space there. And so you see the wood behind this thing. And so it never tightened down. So I had to pull that off, take that, pull it forward, and then slide the reel in like that. Uh, I don't know why. And you still have to crank that all the way forward and it still wobbles a bit. So that's, that's an issue too. Um, for a hundred bucks, I think it's a good rod. Um, just understand its limitations and fish with it gently and uh, I think it'll do well. I've had this specific one for a year now. I fished it in small rivers. I just caught a 20 inch brown trout or 18 inch brown trout with it and it did handle it pretty good as you saw it. It, it flexed well. It did The fish did go for a bit of a run but if you know how to guide fish in you can do just fine with it. So I would honestly still probably have bought this knowing what I know now. I just wouldn't fish it in the winter time. I already have a uh, an Orvis um, and I would get an upgraded reel and other than that that's that's it. Um, I think if you but you you might even be able to buy just the the rod itself for like 90 bucks or something but for 120 bucks I think you're getting something that's, that's pretty good. Um, like I said, it, the, the Orvis though was two and a half times the cost of this. And it does have that quality to match, but it, two and a half times is two and a half times. You're just, if you're getting started in this hobby, then something like this would do just fine. Just do what I've shown you here and you, it'll, you'll, you'll like it. You can fish with it for many seasons. Just be, be gentle on it. It's, it's a lightweight rod. It feels more like a two weight. Um, no, excuse me, it feels more, it feels just like a three weight. Uh, what I imagine a three weight ought to feel like. I've got my Orvis feels more like a two weight if you ask me, but again, rod weight and line weight, there's there's like no difference. The difference between an an eight weight line and a five weight line is a the weight of about a tablespoon of sugar. And so <laughs> stick that in your pipe and smoke it. In fact, this right here is my um, Echo Str um, Streamer X. This is about a $400 rod. I got it paired with a Lamson Liquid um, reel. Love it. And a Max Catch 
sink tip line that is an eight weight line on a seven weight, um, you see a seven weight rod. And the reason I've done that is again, the line weight difference is nothing. And my $130 sink tip Rio line began to crack. This, the blue section on here was kind of a yellowish green on that, I think. And it began to crack after three months. And I've already had this three months and it's not cracking. So again, I don't expect all of the, re all of the, the max catch lines will eventually sink. That's just part of the deal. And so if I know that they're gonna sink, then why the sink tip, it doesn't matter at all. I can fish that all day long and it won't bother me because it's supposed to sink, but floating line should not sink ever. Anyway, love your faces. The flies that I use out here on the Provo are these guys right here. And this is one of them. I just caught that fish on it. I'm gonna chuck this one. Somehow that fish broke the, the, uh, the, the wire here, so I gotta go home and retie that. I've got dozens of these fish. Fish. <laughs> these, these lures. Lures, what the heck? These flies, I gotta... And, and that's just this line here, just a red one. So this is what I... I this is the, the fly I caught that trout on, and all of them are tied on these... these... Um, 90 degree jig hooks from Fulling Mill. These are all size 16s or 18s. Um, all of these are the flies that I've consistently caught fish on in the spring and uh, absolutely love them. If you were to buy all these, they're about $3 a piece, give or take, $3.50 for these. I'm selling this whole set on, on eBay for like $200, 250 I don't know what I've priced it at, but these are the flies that work here uh, on, the, on the lower and middle Provo in the spring. I, I'll, I've got this one on my other line and I'm ready to fish it. And, Anyway, love it, and <laughs> I'll send the link for this below. Thank you so much for joining me anyway. Long-winded review. Um, I wanted to finish this up. I did put a comment on the initial review in my pocket, in, uh, on my initial video. I loved this thing for about the first six months, and then it started having some problems I felt I needed to bring up. And uh, yeah, the, I don't like the reel, but with a few adjustments and understanding, it's you'll, you'll enjoy it. And, uh, the rod itself is, is a lot of fun and again, a good, a good year of usage and I'm not really gentle with my stuff. So if you're gentle with it and you treat it like you probably ought to, it'll last you a while. <laughs> that said, I love your faces and we will see you guys on the next adventure. Don't know what my hand gestures mean. Bye.